Hi, I'm Nikki Woods, and we're going beyond the studio on BlackAmericaWeb.com and the Tom Joyner Morning Show. We are talking to actor, entrepreneur, renaissance man, Demetrius Gross, who stars in Banshee, which is a, a, a new show. Well, not a new show. Actually, you're in season two, but it is also from the creators of True Blood. How are you? I'm doing good this morning. How are you, Nikki? It's good to hear from you. Yeah, I'm pleased to have you because I'm really curious. I mean, I've been reading your bio and you, you're you doing so much, you've done so much, but, but let's start with Banshee. Tell me a little bit about the show for people who aren't familiar and what your role is. Okay, I actually am a uh, part of the, the immediate fabric of Banshee. Uh, Banshee is named after a fictitious uh, Pennsylvania town where uh, Lucas Hood goes after a 15-year stint in, uh, in a penitentiary. He goes to Banshee to avenge his long-lost love, uh, Carrie Hopewell, and uh, poses as a sheriff. I play a, a real sheriff in that town who's uh, his partner, and uh, uh, so there, there's a tremendous amount of dramatic irony and you know, secrets, and so in the second season, um, the, the kind of motto of the second season is uh, you know, good town, bad blood, and the whole idea that we're, that we're playing with in the second season is what happens when a lie sort of reaches its watershed moment, what happens when, when secrets of the past kind of, you know, become powder kegs and, and that sort of thing. So now you are, you are a trained actor. I mean, you, you went to Howard University, so we'll give you some bison love there. Just a uh, little bit. Just a, you know, I, I try not to be biased since we love all of the HBCUs. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you some advice and love. But you also went to the Carnegie Mellon University School of Drama. So you are a trained actor. Did you you know this was what you were going to do when you were little? Is this what you dreamed of? Uh, no, actually. And then I, like, I, I thought I was going to be a basketball player. Because, okay. you know, I wanted to be like Mike, like everybody else who grew up in the inner city and had hoop dreams. And then I wanted to be a veterinarian. So... Um, you went from basketball well, to veterinary to... Yeah. In fact, at Howard, they had a, a summer program called uh, the TRIO programs, and that's where I started uh, learning veterinary and science. And, and uh, they had a math and science initiative, and my focus was veterinary science. Gradually, I went to... Um, I started doing summer musical theater at Sidwell Friends, mm -hmm. and uh, some at, at uh, Gonzaga and Georgetown, they just jumped around and started doing that stuff extracurricularly. And then at, after high school, I said, okay, I'm not great enough to be a basketball player, but I'm pretty good at being an actor. And I just started uh, started studying it. But I didn't know it was what I wanted to do or what I wanted to you know, use to keep the lights on uh, until really late on, like probably like when I was 18, 19 years old. So what was your first big role? What was your first big role? I think my first big role was my first role. Which was? My first role was was a, an extra on the wire. I played a featured extra. Well, at first I was just an extra, and then they upgraded me to a featured extra, and then I got a Taft Hartley. And so my big break was actually as an extra. I started from the bottom, like, you know. Now you're here? <laughs> right. <laughs> so I, I, hopefully one day I'll be able to really look up and say, you know, you can do it too, like. Because I, I started from just, you know, cat, what's it called? Um, cast Central, whatever, Central mm -hmm. Casting. And uh, went up to Baltimore and got selected to be a, a, a extra in the wire. And then, funny enough, a couple of days ago at HBO, I ran into Idris and uh, Michael K. Williams. And Idris remembered, but Michael didn't. But that's no child on, on Michael. He's, he's you so. ran into Idris? Yeah. But it's like, the, you know what's funny? It's, this, it's like the second of. This is the second time in like three weeks that I ran into her. Really? I was in Atlanta shooting a pilot for USA Network for um, for uh, for Fox. It's called Complications. This new Mad Next project. Um, and blah blah blah. Like I I went to the movie theaters. I went to the movie theaters. Saying blah blah blah. Blah. Uh, long story. I'll just say that if it, if it seems like it could tail off into a long story. Okay. But anyway, like so I go to the movies and Mandela's happened to be playing in this particular theater. And Justin Long was the director, and Idris Elba happened to be there. And um, beautiful, I think her name was um, Jackie or something. She's from uh, from Coca Cola, and they, they interviewed him. And so we chatted for a minute after the show. I mean, after the uh, the talk back in screening, and uh, and then I just saw him two nights ago. People keep on saying that I I've, I look similar to him. I didn't so want to say that because I didn't know if you know how you would receive that, but you do. 
Well, yeah, hopefully, you know. You could, like, play brothers in an upcoming movie. Well, I don't, you know, I, I, I look at it like this, hey. I'm not, he's not the worst person to look like. And in fact, you know, someone said that there's something coming up where, we, where he has a brother. So I was like, all right, let me go ahead and get, it, get that space. <laughs> <laughs> So besides, and I guess Idris is a person you would consider someone you'd want to work with. But besides Idris, who is like somebody you would you would love to 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 work with that you haven't worked with already? Mm, I really want to work with the Hughes brothers. Really? Yes, I think they are (laughs) underrated and genius uh, tandem. You know, like they 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 did the Book of Eli, but they also did. what was it? Uh, their presidents. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, they, they have a very uh, diverse uh, lens through which they see the world, and uh, I think they would be exciting to work with. I think a director like uh, Roberto Al- Almodovar would be. Uh, Roberto Almodovar is a, is a, a South American, uh, and of course Spike Lee. Like I would love to work with Spike one day. I want to work with Haile Green, but I want to work with uh, Bill Duke. I want to work with. Um, Lots of people. I got a chance to work with Shirley Joe Finney this year, which is great. Um, yeah, I just t- I got a list of people, directors that I want to work with. Now, actors, I just want to work with whoever is, is as passionate about the project as I am, and mm-hmm. sees the the telos and the pathos and the ethos of the project the way I do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And as long as I mean, Nikki, you could be an actress in it. As long as you, you know, as long as I know the what is it, the Palos and the. It could be you and me along. It don't matter as long as you, you know, you know what I mean. As long as you, you, you feel the the, the weight, gravitas, and potential of what we're doing. It doesn't matter who the, if it's a star or whatever that is, or, or if it's not a star, really. You know. So before I let you go, though, I definitely want to talk about your passion for children. And I want to mention some of the things that you do also outside of acting. But I know that, that, that children are something that um, you feel very strongly about working with. So tell me a little bit about that and the kinds of projects you're involved in. Well, it's, it's actually very practical. I mean, I, I grew up in a situation where I didn't know my biological father for a long time. But I, I had a man in my life who was my mom's husband. And who uh, who raised who basically raised me the man I know is my father so uh, childhood and positive male role model and uh, surrogacy all that stuff is is is, is iconically important to me um, so wherever I am like I was shooting Banshee in North Carolina and I was shooting complications in Atlanta I try to at least even if I can only squeeze away a day to maybe do a talk back or a mentorship thing. Um, uh, you know, some kind of workshop, you know what I mean? Just so that our young black boys and girls can see that they can, they can do arts, that we don't all have to play, play a sport, that we can do arts, that we don't even, you know, we can be engineers, we can be doctors, we can be lawyers, but we can also be successful actors, we can be successful dancers, successful painters. We don't have to be celebrities and multimillionaires, but we can live a lifestyle, uh, incorporating our gifts right. and, and, and flourishing them. So that's a, that's an important kind of message I try to I try to to share with them. And I just recently became a father this year, so Aww. it is even on a whole different of a never ever album. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. So also I, I hear you own a barber shop. I hear you. How do you hear all this? I just, I'm telling you, I hear you have like a, an accessory line for men, and that you are you are a a true entrepreneur. So tell me quickly about those things too. Well, in a nutshell, I am a uh, a, a uh, you know basically I'm just a hustler, a, a man of color. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> a, I'm, just, I'm a hustler. You're a hustler. You, know, I mean, you, you don't have time to waste. I, I, my comp- the, comp- the haberdashery company is actually my best friend's company that I, I help him with marketing and sort of placement. It's called uh, RJP, uh, Richard James Prady. It's named after his grandfather, and they deal with bow ties, um, tie pins, you know, li- the little accents of, uh, of, of male clothing. Uh, our whole thing is like, you know, we'd rather be GQ than PG, you know what I'm saying? So that's that. And then I, I've been cutting hair since I was in college. I grew up in a barber shop and, uh, I mean, and then I had a barber's license out here, apprenticeship license, and graduated into getting my own little studio, a little small thing, one chair, appointment only, you know, call it Timbuktu. That's, That's what it's called, Timbuktu? 
Yeah. <laughs> I think that's fascinating. <coughs> so, Demetrius Gross, it has been lovely getting to know you. Um, when can we see Banshee? You can see it tomorrow, actually, on Friday night at 10 o'clock on Zoom Max. Uh -huh. I think it might be on HBO Go, too. That's a rumor, but I, I think it's definitely on Max Go and on Cinemax. All right. Well, we appreciate you, Demetrius, and good luck to you. Hopefully, we'll have you back soon. Yeah, good talking to you, Nikki. Have a wonderful day. You too.